hills of Laos On the hillside That old Looks like so And it sends out a light When I'm tossed about Bring anything out of anything. 
He said, but if it doesn't bring forth fruit, I'm going to cut it down. Pray that you bring forth fruit. You can't stay in Christ the same way and never come out. He'll cut you down. You got to be fruitful. You have to be fruitful. As a matter of fact, you ought to understand. Let me show you how the Bible goes hand in hand. The reason why Christ talks about being fruitful is to go all the way back to Genesis. He told Adam, be fruitful and multiply. That's a universal law. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Let it change. In Christ, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Multiply. Bring forth the works of God in you. Bring forth the works of God. Bring forth your life. Be fruitful. Just don't sit there. Because when you sit there, you're not showing faith. Amen. But when you move with what you got, at least you're showing God you believe in somewhere. Yes. And he can work with you. That's why the man who hid his talent, the Bible said, God said, take that what he has and give it to him that has ten. Well, why would you give it to the man that has more? God said that he that have not, it shall be taken away from him what he got. Amen. And shall be given to him to have more. Why is that? Because him that had a little, but didn't multiply, didn't have faith. Sat on it. And without faith, it is. Without faith, it is. Impossible to please God. I'm not going to play with you today. This is my sermon. This, I said, God, what is the miracle? Read verse 11. Read very carefully as I close it. And behold. Listen carefully. Behold. There was a woman. There was a woman. Which had a spirit. Everybody say a spirit. spirit. Of infirmity. That was a supernatural being. A devil in this case. A spirit of infirmity. 18 years. 18 years. The word infirmity means Mental weakness, physical weakness, or diseases. Mental weakness, physical weakness, emotional weakness, immoral weakness, as well as diseases. This woman had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together. And could in no wise lift up herself. She bowed down, afflicted, 18 years, and didn't know that it was a demon. It was a spirit. Could you imagine her frame of thinking? Could you imagine all the thoughts of suicide and giving up and misery and oppression? All along. 18 years this devil had her. You see, this, when you read a lot of the scriptures when it talks about healing and deliverance, the spirit of infirmity is mentioned with it. He cast out the devil to heal the disease and all that infirmity. So the spirit of infirmity is, is like a spirit, I, I call it like the AIDS virus. Many times when you die with the AIDS virus, it's not the HIV that kills you, but it breaks down your immune system. Well, this, this spirit of infirmity is like a spirit that comes in, son, and it binds you. And other spirits come in and take advantage of you. And in order to get loose from the other spirit, you got to break the main spirit that's got you. The spirit of infirmity that has you oppressed, has you bound. Down. Amen. It, it takes advantage of your weakness. Infirmity means the weakness of the mind. The weakness of the body. And then a lust demon can come on in. And that confusing demon, that demon that always got the paranoia in the mind, can come on in. Because the spirit of infirmity has been walking with you all these years. And you didn't know it. And he causes other demons to come in. Verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Woman. And said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Yes, Lord. Woman, you are loose from that devil. That word loose, give you something. What's the word, teacher? Sentinels? Is that right? Yes. 
Woman, thou art free. Woman, thou art relieved. Woman, thou art released. Woman, this spirit is dismissed. Woman, that spirit has to depart. Woman, you are forgiven. I like this one. Woman, you are divorced from that spirit. Lord have mercy. That demon heard the word of the Lord. And as he began to rise up off that woman, she began to raise herself up. And what did he do, preacher? And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight. And glorify God. And glorify God. Quickly, Matthew chapter 8. Uh, I believe around verse 17. What does it say? Yeah, read it. Matthew 8. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities. Yes, so Jesus was going around healing the sick. And it said that it might be fulfilled, spoken by the prophet, that Jesus himself took our infirmities. And bear our sicknesses. He bear our sicknesses. He took upon the demons that oppress us. When God heals you and delivers you, he's taking that thing. That word took means to seize. Yes. To seize. To remove. And Jesus removed. He seized. That thing that had us seized, he seized it. That which had us bound, he bound it. Hebrews chapter 4. Somewhere around verse 13, 14, and 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him of whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we are not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Read that again. We have. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. We have a high priest, yes. speaking of Christ, who has been touched, uh -huh. which cannot be touched. Read that again. But we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our purpose. What that means is that he can feel it. It ain't that he can't be touched by him. He, he, he's felt him. He, he's been touched by him. In other words, he's felt the demons. They know him. He would go preaching and people would unclean the spirit. They'd say, we know who you are. Holy Jesus. He's felt your infirmities and your temptations and your sicknesses. And yet, everything you've gone through, 
He felt it and yet without sin. He overcame it for us. He overcame it for us. And by his stripes, the Old Testament said, you were healed. And the New Testament said, by your stripes, you are healed. He understands, he can feel, he knows. This is why Romans 8 and 26 says this. Are you ready? Romans 8 and 26 says this. Likewise, Likewise. the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost, helps our infirmity. Helps the things that we go through. Helps us fight the demons that come against us. Helps us fight the things that try to bear us down. Read it. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. We, but, don't, we don't always know what to pray. But but the Spirit, but Jesus itself, who could be touched by infirmity, Jesus who withstood the devil on every end, Amen. Jesus that went through all the trials yet without sin, uh -huh. who has given us that Holy Ghost, yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> that Holy Ghost, that spirit of Christ Amen. who has withstood the devil already yes, yes. knows how to pray yes, knows what to pray yes, <clears throat> and we think that it was our prayer that got us through no. but we were praying a left field to where but the Holy Ghost stepped up and began to pray the right prayer and when that Holy Ghost moved in that Jesus recognized that prayer that Jesus recognized that presence he said now the spirit of Christ is there I'm only going to say, 